Hi guys and welcome to our next tutorial and today it's the five best tips to inserting people in your architectural renders. And a little side note, we're not going to be using Photoshop. Okay, don't don't disconnect just yet. I, th I feel you guys are really going to enjoy this one and there's some extra tips that I think really cuts out the Photoshop to be honest and we all want that. So let's get to this. Okay, so just a little bit of news before we start. As you guys may know, some of you, the more attentive, our website is up, the new website's being refurbished and it's kind of a bit cleaner and you've got all the same content with a little more cleaner interface and you've got a little extra additional thing, which is our courses. Now we're working on this, I, how many times have I promised this? But we are working on it this time. So don't forget to sign up to the newsletter and we hope to bring you these again, always dedicated to post-production and matte painting and also the art of visualization in general. Also, before we start, I wanna ask something to you guys. There's a big thing between using 3D and 2D people. I really wanna know what you guys use. Do you prefer 2D or 3D? And if you don't mind, tell me why. Because uh, you'll learn a little bit in our video. I think you can adapt some of this to 3D people as well, but it touches a little bit on one of the subjects, and I think it's one of the tips which is down below, mostly posed or non posed. So we'll get to that. Don't forget, if you like our videos, please subscribe, like us, dislike us, tell us what you think. Anyway, let's do this. So, tip number one. Choose the right people. Now, this sounds super basic, right? It's uh, the right people. But when I'm referring to that, I'm referring to a variety of things. So firstly, don't mix summer, autumn, and winter. Uh, people in various views, unless you're kind of going to ski Dubai or something. But this is super important. I mean, it's those little things that our brain picks up on. I mean, mix up your views. If you're doing a city view, our cities are so cosmopolitan. I mean, look at London, go out and take a photo in the middle of London and look how many ethnicities, how many cultures. It's up to us as well as artists, as people to really mix it up, diversify, add that little extra step um, that really also pushes the boundary forward. Same thing to be said with age, disability, all these types of things really uh, help our visuals gain that realism of everyday life, as well as the age groups. You know, of course you're going to have this typical age group which works around that, but you're going to have that little splice of extra something that you can also mix up and have a little bit of fun with. You can also add to this by taking photographs of people yourself. Um, you know, if you can't find the right person, Take the photograph yourself, take it of your friends, have some fun with it. Sometimes we put photos of ourselves into visuals and even clients. And it's just a little bit of fun to also break up what can be sometimes quite um, an obstacle, which is people. And I know a lot of people tend to struggle with this, sometimes even ourselves. We have to put a lot of time into that. Okay, so tip number two. And now tip number two is an interesting one because I see many times um, that there is this thing of using posed versus non-posed. I don't really think I've ever used posed people. I mean, we see this fashionistas, which I've heard this name um, before, uh, being used. And I wouldn't really use that. They're not everyday people. They really don't feel, I mean, if you put someone in front of a camera, naturally your body language just Unless, if you're not trained on it, your body language just tends to constrain. We're all like that. I'm not a model or anything like that. I myself do it. But if you just take a mundane photo and you say, hey, look at me and let's take this photo, you'll notice that you really just get static. It's just something you don't move the same way, not unless you're in theater. Now, there's a certain beauty of how we are naturally, uh, how we are out and about naturally. We, we don't put in our bellies. We, we have a more natural posture. Um, we have something that feels right and we can feel that in the image and also how people are moving in your image if you have people that look like they're running or sprinting or walking really fast and it's like a library it doesn't make sense right so these things also don't make sense the same thing with people actually posing I've seen really interesting stuff especially in collages that looks absolutely amazing where people are posing and it looks really freaking good I love it but on a day-to-day -day, on what we do it just I mean, you can use them from time to time, 
but I feel that most people, they really break that sense of photo reality or that sense of what you guys want to convey in an image. Unless, of course, it's advertising or something like that. I'm talking more in the visual aspect of what we create. Tip number three, the right perspective and the right lighting. Now, this is really important. I, again, seems like a simple one, but you can't imagine how many times we see it, how many times I do it myself, use people in the incorrect lighting. If you have a big image and with a lot of people that you need to actually work into it, I mean, you can save so much time by just making sure you use the right person for the right, um, the right perspective and of course the right lighting. Don't put people uh, from interior views and exterior views and vice versa, ambient light versus a, a contrasting light. You know, this light, the color of this light is going to be different to different spaces, different interiors. So take that into attention, how you light a scene, even if you're taking photos of yourself, um, to actually how you use certain people in certain types of lighting within your scenes. If you've got a harsh daylight, a strong sun, you have to be sure that it's not a person in sunset. It just doesn't look right. The color doesn't match, the, the shadow doesn't match. And painting that one by one, when you've got like 40, 50 people to add, just doesn't make sense. The same to be said, if you're taking a photo from below um, or you're, you're doing a visual from below and you need some up on balconies, try and find people that are up on balconies. I mean, uh, there's tons of sites that are doing this. We have our, our people as well that we've taken photographs many years ago. Um, but there are tons of sites online right now uh, that are doing this and you can find the correct person to fit the correct perspective. One other tip is if you are using indeed people, um, make sure that those people are more or less the correct perspective that you're using. That said, I'm, as you can see my hand as it drifts out and it drifts out, you can see that it starts to distort a little bit to the side. This is because we're using like a 16 mil lens. And as it distorts out to the side, you'll notice that it also the, the proportion that it is here is different to the proportion here. Let's see if I can get it. So it's gonna look a bit wider and fatter here. The same thing to be said with people. If you use people that are kind of photographed from the side or lenses that have a lot of perspective, they may not fit your perspective because your perspective might be a really narrow one, a shallow depth of field, 80 mil, and the same thing to be said vice versa, right? So if you have very wide perspective and you've put someone in the middle from that wide perspective on the side, it may not work because they distort. So distort that and account for that a little bit more. Tip number four, four. <laughs> so tip number four, composition and activity. Um, now. One of the most beautiful things about what we do is that people inhabit our spaces and we can use those people as complementary elements of the composition. So we can compose those people to guide our eye and really help um, with that and really help understand where our eye should go through negative space and positive space and light and shadow. People are also super important because they give scale. And that scale, imagine you have a blank facade. You've got a blank facade and you can't really understand the scale of that facade, nor can you understand the detail. Sometimes a key person will just add that little extra bit of animation and scale. I mean, I want to go back to Fernand Guerra, which you guys know. He's one of my favorite photographers. And just see what he does with people. He's photographing really minimalist spaces that are really beautiful and kind of have this essence to them. And he, he has this whimsical way about him of how he adds people to those, to those photographs and how those people really become kind of this extra element that helps to give not only scale, but like tell a story, tell a story of that space. What are people doing in that space? And they're generally motion blurred and things like that. So they add a little something. You're not focusing on the person, you're focusing on the activity of that person. And it kind of gives you that extra sense of, um, okay, this is a family space where a family lives and it just enables you to kind of playfully understand the image in another way. One final note on this one is sometimes you have a hero person. That hero person just makes your shot. It really adds that little something. I remember Dylan Cole's image. I remember when he had this monk and he actually took the photograph himself, just draped over. 
and the image it's kind of made by this and I, I think even one of those one of these the one of the famous paintings which you're seeing on screen uh, it's just all about this it's the person looking over the cliff and understand through the clouds and it's kind of surrealist and it just gives something and I feel like as visualizers as people who are making something more than just an image we're making a feeling and I feel like people are really an understated maximus of this and finally tip number five just have fun with it. I mean, people are one of those elements that we can really control. Sometimes the architecture we can't control too much, sometimes in, in a certain way. But there's something whimsical and fun about how people can be used in a scene and how can, they can be used to inform the architecture and make it a little bit lighter, brighter, darker, moody, um, or have that little bit of surrealness, sentiment. There's so many things. And people shouldn't just be used in what I'm saying in the stand format, it's gotta be photo real. No, I mean, I've seen some amazing collages where people are used and you have these stylists, fashionistas, and they're used in a really cool way because that's kind of a critique as well of like, wow, just fashionistas inhabit this space and things like that. And just how it's done and applied, I've seen in really cool ways. Even I think back in uni, I, I did something of the sort, but you know, just just enjoy it. It's another element that will really add life and composition and something additional to your works. Just like plans, elevations, etc. use the use of people and how sometimes they're even stylized. All right, so I hope you enjoy that. Uh, I hope uh, we've kind of opened up your eyes a little bit about people and the importance of people, especially here in the studio. Don't forget to join us for the next one. Subscribe and like below. And yeah, let us know. What do you prefer, 2D or 3D? And don't forget, you know, you know the words, guys. Do it in post. <laughs>